Hi students, this is Mrs. Whitaker. I'm going over your homework tonight. So tonight we're working on decomposing volume shapes and you know working out and getting the volume of each of those decomposed parts and then we compose it back together to get a final answer. So you had to do the practice tonight which was estimating each sum or difference to the nearest whole number. So the first part is estimating. Then you got to calculate the exact sum or difference. So you had to estimate first and then you had to actually work it out. So for part A, the nearest whole would be 5 plus this next one would be 67 and then 3.83 would round to 4. So when you work that out, you get a total of Let's see, 5 plus 4 is 9, and then 67 plus 9 would be 76. So that's our estimated answer. So now when we work it out, it should be somewhere close to 76. So when I add decimals, I have to make sure I line them up. I usually like to write my largest whole number first, so it's 67 decimal 13. Then I would write 4 decimal 7, 8 and then 3.83. Again, when we're adding decimals, we line them up and we bring the decimal straight down. Where when we multiply, we take it out and bring it back in. So um, 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 3 more would be 14. Regroup your 1. 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 1 more would be 10, and then plus 7 is 17. Regroup your 1. Um, I always try to get 10, so that's why you might see me jumping around. I know 7 and 3, 7 and 3 give me 10, plus 4 would be 14, plus 1 more would be 15. Regroup my 1, and then I get 7 when I do 6 plus 1. So my answer would be 75.74, which this 75.74 is very close, very close. So they're not equal, but they're very close. So you're supposed to do the rest of these like that. Um, you need to estimate, and you need to get the exact sum or difference. Um, looking at two, we did number two. We did one just like this in class. I'll do um, one again. We need to find the air or the volume of the whole entire um, solid figure, and then we need to find the volume of the whole right here, and then we can subtract it from the whole entire solid figure, the volume. So that way whatever's left would be what's not shaded. So we're going to start with finding the volume of the whole entire box, which this is the length, 0 0.9. The width is 1.2 and the height would be 0 0.9. The volume formula would be on your reference sheet so you don't have to memorize it, but you do need to realize that this is a volume question. So you're going to do 0 0.9 multiplied by 1.2, multiplied by 0 0.9. Now I usually like to try to get, I don't want to do 9 times 9 because that's going to give me 81 and then I'll have 81 times 12. I want to try to keep a single digit on the bottom. We talked about this in class a little bit. So I'm going to actually do the 9 times 12 which is going to give me 108. Um, I need to remember that I have to bring my decimal back over two places because it comes out one, one, it needs to come back over two. So it's one decimal, zero, eight, and I multiply it by that third dimension, 0 0.9. I can take my decimals out here. I took it out two, one for a total of three. Now I work out my problem. Nine times eight is 72. We group my seven. 9 times 0 is 0, plus 7 is 7, and then 9 times 1 is 9. Bring my decimal back over three places, and this is my answer, not the final answer, it's the volume answer for the whole entire three-dimensional shape. Now I'm going to find the volume of this part that has a hole in it, this part. Well, I know it's a square, so that means all dimensions must be the same. So I'm going to do 0 0.2 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. That would be my length, my width, my height. So I start with doing 0 0.2 times 0 0.2, which would give me a 2 times 2 is 4. Bring your decimal back over 
twice, so it's decimal 0, 04. And then I'm going to multiply it by that third dimension, which is 0, decimal 2. Pull out my decimals, 2, 1, a total of 3 places. I'm going to bring my decimal back over. So 4 times 2 is 8, and I don't need to do 2 times 0, but I am going to be bringing my decimal back over 3 places. So 1, 2, 3. There goes my decimal, and I have to put two placeholders there. So, my total volume for the whole shape is decimal nine point or decimal nine seven two, and I need to remove out this hole right here. So to do that, to remove something, you need to subtract. So I'm going to line up my decimals. I'm going to be subtracting, and I'm going to fill in my numbers. So I have decimal nine seven two and I'm going to have decimal zero, zero, 008. And when I go to subtract, I'm going to have to borrow. So that's 12 take away 8, which is 4. 6 take away 0 is 6. And 9 take away 0 is 9. This would be the volume of what is remaining after you take out that hole. So yes, it does take quite a bit of work, but um, at least it was, you know, smaller in decimals that you can multiply with. So when you go to do number three, you don't have any holes that you're removing. You're going to be cutting it up like this. So you might want to do the volume of this shape. And then the volume of this shape. And then you can add the two answers together to get your final answer. Okay, for the back side, the review part, it says consider the Rubik's Cube. I had a lot of kids asking about the word consider. Consider means just look at it. You know, look at the shape. What do you see? Then it says, A, calculate the volume of one of the tiny cubes making up the, the, the um, shape. Well, I know right here, oops, let me shade it a different color. This is one cube. If the whole distance is 57, I would take 57 and I would divide it by one-third because I only want to know what one-third or one of the squares would be. So I divide it by thirds. And to do division with fractions, we should know how to do this from topic two. You're going to keep, you're going to change, and you're going to flip. So when I work this out, I should get 171 over 1. That does not make sense. Actually, I think I'm multiplying it by 1 third, not dividing it by 1 third. I'm trying to figure out what would be one third. Let me say that. That's not said right. We're going to do 57 divided by 3 because there are 3 squares. That makes more sense. So when we divide 3, into 57, 3 goes into 5 one time, and I get 27 left over. 3 goes into 27 nine times. So each square would have a length of 19. Okay, well, if it's a cube, that means all sides are the same because I see 57, 57, 57. I would have to do nine, that cube, this little cube has a length of 19, which means it's going to have a height of 19, and it's going to have a width, if I make it three-dimensional, it's going to have a width of 19. So to work that out, I would do 19 times 19 times 19, and what would that give me? So if I do 19 times 19, 
9 times 9 is 81. 9 times 1 is 9 plus 8 would be 17. And then I need to have my 0. And I do 1 times 9 as my placeholder. 1, and cross that out, cross that out. 1 times 9 is 9, and 1 times 1 is 1. Add the answers together. 1, 16, 3. So 361 would be those two dimensions. Now I'm going to do 361 times 19 again for that third 19. And what does that give me? That gives me 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times 3 is 27. Plus 5 is 33. 9, 33, 32. Nope, 32. Sorry, 32. Put your placeholder. Cross that out, cross that out. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 6 is 6, and 1 times 3 is 3. Add your answers together, 9, 5, 8, and 6. So the volume of one of those little cubes is 6,859. Then it says calculate the volume of the cube using your answer to question 1. Then calculate the volume using the volume formula. Show your work. So, calculate the volume of the Rubik's Cube using your answer to question 1. Then, calculate the volume using the volume formula shown in your work. So, we did that one. Now, we're going to do the volume of the whole cube, which will be 57 times 57 times 57. Um, 2 says Ms. Hendrick said that when she was a girl, she, you need to work this part out. I'm not going to do that one for you. Um, it said, Mrs. Hendricks said that when she was a girl, she used to make mixed cassette tapes with her favorite songs. One side of the cassette was 22 and a half minutes of a bowl of space. How many four and two fifths songs could Mr. Hendricks record on one side of the cassette tape? So to me, it looks like you're dividing that, that one side into four and two fifths minutes. So you're going to be doing 22 and one half divided by four and two fifths. Now, can I divide the way the numbers are as mixed numbers? No, you've got to change it to improper by doing the check mark and then also remember to do your keep, change, and flip. Um, part three, you should be able to multiply. You just multiply across for A and B. I hope this helps you. You have a good night. And my bonus question is going to be, hmm, what should I do tonight? Let's say, ooh, I want you to write at the top of your paper what is Miss Whitaker's favorite foot, no, football team. Where is my favorite football team, college football team? And it's the school that I graduated college from. So hopefully if you're paying attention in class at all, you might have looked around the room and seen my diploma from somewhere. I hope you have a good night, and I'll talk to you later.